Hi guys, welcome back. As we have already studied the muscles of the pectoral region separately, so now let's give a quick review to these muscles. So these are the muscles of the pectoral region and there are four muscles which constitute this region. These muscles are the pectoralis major muscle, the pectoralis minor muscle, the subclavius muscle and the serratus anterior muscle. So the most superficial muscle of this region is this fan shaped muscle, the pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis major muscle has two heads of origin, a clavicular head and a sternocostal head. The clavicular head originates here at the anterior surface of the medial two-third of the clavicle, while the sternocostal head originates here at the half of the sternum and it also originates from the costal cartilages up to the sixth or seventh costal cartilage. And this muscle then inserts here through a single tendon on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. And if we look at the nerve supply of the pectoralis major muscle, so this muscle is supplied by the medial and lateral pectoral nerves which originate from the medial and lateral cords of the brachial plexus respectively. Now let's look at the action produced by this muscle. So as we studied that the pectoralis major muscle originates through two heads that is through the clavicular head and through the sternocostal head. So these two heads on contraction produce somehow individual action as well as they perform combined action as well. So the clavicular head on contraction produces shoulder flexion. That is when the clavicular fibers contract, they flex the humerus bone at the shoulder joint. So the clavicular fibers produce shoulder flexion. While the sternocostal fibers on contraction produce shoulder depression, that is when the sternocostal fibers contract, these fibers depress the humerus at the shoulder joint. So these fibers produce shoulder depression. Now what's the combined action of these fibers? So these fibers on contraction produce one of the important action that is the shoulder at adduction. So when the clavicular and the sternocostal fibers contract, they produce shoulder adduction. And another most important combined action produced by these two fibers is the medial rotation of the arm. So when the clavicular and the sternocostal fibers contract combinedly, these fibers medially rotate the arm as you can see. Now underlying the pectoralis major muscle is this triangular muscle, the pectoralis minor muscle. The pectoralis minor muscle originates from the anterior surfaces of the third, fourth and fifth ribs, just near or lateral to the costochondral junctions. And this muscle inserts here on the medial side of the coracoid process of the scapula. Now if we look at the nerve supply of the pectoralis minor muscle, so this muscle is supplied by the medial pectoral nerve which originates from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. So these branches supplying the pectoralis minor muscle are actually the pectoral branches of the medial pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve underlies this muscle. So I would remove this muscle so that I can show you the medial pectoral nerve. So now the muscle is removed and you can see the different nerves. So let me show you the medial pectoral nerve. So this one is the medial pectoral nerve originating from the 
from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. So this one is the medial pectoral nerve which then gives off pectoral branches to the pectoralis minor muscle. Let's discuss the function of the pectoralis minor muscle. So the pectoralis minor muscle you can see produces shoulder depression that is it depresses the shoulder joint by acting on the coracoid process of the scapula. As you can see the pectoralis minor muscle as it contracts it draws the scapula downward so that it produces shoulder depression. So in this way the pectoralis minor muscle stabilizes the shoulder girdle. The third muscle of the pectoral region is this small muscle, the subclavius muscle. The subclavius muscle lies underneath the pectoralis major muscle. So looking into the origin and the insertion of the subclavius muscle, so this muscle originates here on the first costochondral junction and then it goes upward and laterally to insert here in the subclavian groove on the inferior surface of the middle third of the clavicle. The subclavian artery, the subclavian vein and the brachial plexus pass under the subclavius muscle. Now the nerve supply, so the subclavius muscle is supplied, supplied by the subclavian nerve, also called the nerve to the subclavius muscle, which originates from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, the nerve roots C5 and C6. Let me show you. So this nerve supplying the subclavius muscle is the subclavian nerve which originates from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, nerve roots C5 and C6. Now let's look at the function of the subclavius muscle. So if we look at the origin and the insertion of this muscle, so this muscle actually works to depress the clavicle and this muscle also stabilizes the shoulder girdle during movements of the sternoclavicular joint. Another function that this muscle performs is the elevation of the first rib. So when this muscle contracts, it elevates the first rib and draws the first rib towards the clavicle. And so this muscle helps in inspiration. And the last muscle of the pectoral region is this muscle, the serratus anterior muscle. So the serratus anterior muscle is this fan shaped muscle of the pectoral region and this muscle is located at the lateral aspect of the thoracic wall. The major part of this muscle lies under the scapula and the pectoral muscles. The serratus anterior muscle is named for its saw tooth shaped appearance also called the serrated appearance. That's why this muscle is named as the serratus anterior muscle. So first looking at the origin and insertion of the serratus anterior muscle. So this muscle originates here at the anterolateral aspect of the first eight or nine ribs. And this muscle then inserts here on the anterior aspect of the medial border and the inferior angle of the scapula. Now the nerve supply of the serratus anterior muscle, so this muscle is supplied by the long thoracic nerve which originates from the nerve roots C5, C6 and C7 of the brachial plexus. This nerve is the long thoracic nerve and this nerve originates here at the nerve roots C5, C6 and C7 of the brachial plexus. Now looking into the action produced by the serratus anterior muscle,
so this muscle produces shoulder protraction that is the ventrolateral movement of the scapula around the chest wall as you can see the scapula moves around the chest wall this action is known as the shoulder protraction performed by the serratus anterior muscle another action produced by the serratus anterior muscle is the active stabilization of the scapula in the shoulder joint when the scapula is fixed then the serratus anterior muscle on contraction lifts the ribs and thus this muscle acts as an accessory inspiratory muscle another most important function of the serratus anterior muscle is the shoulder abduction above 90 degree that is when this muscle contracts this muscle acts on the lower part of the scapula and and thus this muscle tilts the scapula and shifts the shoulder joint upward and hence it helps in the shoulder abduction above 90 degree so these were the functions performed by the serratus anterior muscle so now if we look at the vascular supply of the pectoral region so there is a dense network of arteries supplying the pectoral region as you can see so this artery arising from the second part of the axillary artery is the thoracoacromial artery and this artery supplies both the pectoralis minor and the pectoralis major muscle through its pectoral branches and this artery is the clavicular branch of the thoracoacromial artery and this clavicular branch of the thoracoacromial artery then supplies the subclavius muscle while this artery is the lateral thoracic artery which arises from the second part of the axillary artery and this lateral thoracic artery supplies the serratus anterior muscle along with the lateral thoracic artery is this artery the subscapular artery which arises from the third part of the axillary artery and this artery then supplies the serratus anterior muscle through its numerous branches so this was about the vascular supply of the pectoral region and after this we have covered the muscles of the pectoral region so if any one of you wants to study these muscles in detail you will have to study these muscles individually through our tutorials so we we have also described each of these muscles individually in our tutorials thank you so much